much. Uh, my name is Anthony Mara. Um, I've written a novel called A Constellation of Vital Phenomena. And I just want to say what a pleasure it is to be, to be up here with these amazing writers and to have had the opportunity to meet many of you over this weekend and listen to, and hear about your schools and your students. I myself teach um, first years every week at Stanford. And um, coming into the class uh, the first day of the quarter and knowing that there is at least one book that they've all read um, that wasn't part of the Game of Thrones series <laughs> is, is an immense uh, you know, source of comfort to us educators uh, as well as to our students. So, so thank you. Um, a Constellation of Vital Phenomena is set in Chechnya, but it really begins in my own college experience. When I was a junior, I decided to apply to a study abroad program in St. Petersburg. I'm not Russian by heritage. At the time, I had taken no Russian language classes. But I had taken a class on Dostoevsky. And I knew that the opportunity to live for five months in Raskolnikov's Petersburg was an opportunity I'd probably never have again. I had some wonderful professors who imprinted upon me the idea that learning is an adventure, and that by being open and by being present to the kinds of possibilities that surround us as undergraduates, we might come across something that shifts the trajectory of our lives. That happened to me in St. Petersburg. I lived down the street from a Russian military cadet academy. And every day I would see uh, 17, 16 and 17 year old kids marching down the block in military formation. And at the tail end of their, of their circuit, they would pass by the local metro station. And as they passed, they would pass a group of veterans who had come back from a conflict that these cadets might one day join. These veterans were homeless, uh, many had amputated limbs, and they were at the metro station panhandling. And as they passed, these teenagers, these teenage cadets, would, would sort of glance at these veterans with, with fear and uncertainty, as if peering into their own futures. And the veterans would look back um, with pity and, and perhaps a bit of contempt. And it was just this small moment, but it, it, it stayed with me. And for many years afterwards, I wanted to figure out what it was that separated these two groups of young people besides a couple of years and a few feet of asphalt. The answer was Chechnya, a place I'd come to research, to travel through, and to eventually write about in, in this novel. It's a remarkable place. It's where we see the legacies of imperialism and communism intersect with the emergence of militant Islam. It's perhaps one of the reasons that any of us here have ever heard the name Vladimir Putin. But more than anything, it was the stories of ordinary civilians, people who weren't particularly extreme in their religious or political beliefs, people a lot like my friends, my family, um, that touched me uh, the deepest. A Constellation of Vital Phenomena is the title of this novel, but it's also the medical dictionary definition of life. There are six vital phenomena, organization, irritability, adaptation, growth, movement, and reproduction. And it's the constellation of these six that define life as we know it at its most basic cellular level. Similarly, this novel is constructed as a constellation of six main characters. And as we follow them, as they search for and flee from and collide with one another, their stories gradually weave together into a whole that is much more complex and interconnected than any one of them might suspect. Among these characters is Ahmed, a failed surgeon who watches as his next door neighbor and lifelong friend is abducted by Russian soldiers. Later that evening, he finds his friend's eight-year-old daughter hiding in the woods behind his house, and he takes her to the only safe place he can think of, which is a rundown hospital in a nearby city. This hospital is run by a surgeon named Sonia. She's the only surgeon in a city of thousands, and she's tough-minded, uh, unsentimental, determined as she's had to be both as a woman and an ethnic Russian in a society that values uh, neither. She agrees to take in this orphan girl, provided that Ahmed agrees to come back to this hospital every day and help her run it. These three characters and the peculiar family that they form in, in this hospital remain the, the nucleus of the, the book, even as it begins to whirl outward. We follow Sonia's sister, whose uh, past intersects with that of the orphan girl and her father. We follow a village informer who was 
wants something of a godfather to this, to this child as he searches for her, trying to surrender her to the Russians in exchange for the insulin that his father needs. We, father, we follow the informer's father, a historian who spent his entire career writing this epic, multi-volume history of Chechnya. And every time he gets close to finishing it, a shift in political power in Moscow means he has to go back and revise the entire book in order to conform with the prevailing regime's interpretation of history. Like that medical <clears throat> dictionary I stumbled upon many years ago, this is a novel that believes that extraordinary sums arise from ordinary parts, that we only begin to understand our own stories when we begin to understand how they weave into the stories of others, that this is how the fabric of community emerges. By mending the stories of surgeon and patient, informer and informed upon, prodigal child and forgiving parent, these characters come upon the possibility of transcendence, even when, particularly when, that possibility seems precluded. Solzhenitsyn once wrote that the line between good and evil doesn't, doesn't run between nations, but rather runs through every human heart. We draw that line within us each day by the choices we make, and this is a setting that magnifies moral choice. Should a surgeon always abide by the Hippocratic, uh, by the, by the Hippocratic Oath, even if it means saving those who intend to harm her? Should a son inform on his half-brother, if it means saving the life of their shared father? Is a land without law a land without crime, or does the absence of legal justice require us to build and maintain an ethical code, and at what, what costs? So while this is a novel about characters in Chechnya, it's really about people anywhere who struggle with difficult moral choices that have no simple answers. That readers in America may have little familiarity with this region is part of the point. The novel becomes an experimentation an exercise in empathy, asking readers to identify with those whose lives couldn't be more materially different, but who struggle with the same fundamental question, questions of morality that we all face. While writing this book, I drew from the work of scholars across the humanities and sciences. I wanted to find in medicine, in biology, in anatomy, a language to describe that which science has traditionally left to poetry. To use rich characters and a riveting page-turning plot to ask readers to care about people we are more accustomed to reading about in the back sections of newspapers. I've always thought that it's a shame that novels are usually only taught in English classes because a good novel should draw from and give back to the kinds of interdisciplinary conversations that thrive on our campuses. A history or poli-sci or IR major might read Constellation and talk about the role of geopolitics, the history of geopolitics, and how it infects and bleeds into everyday interactions in the present. A psychology major might look at the lingering effects of trauma within the community. A biology or chemistry major might look at the role of medicine, at how these characters uh, find a kind of spiritual sustenance in the fact that as living organisms, they are imprinted with the ability to grow and adapt. A religious studies major might look at the divisions in Islam between tolerance and militancy. A business major might look at the, the region's transition from uh, from state-run economies to free markets, and so on. The beauty of literature is that there are as many ways to read a novel as there are readers. Over the last year, I've been privileged um, and very fortunate with some of these readers. Um, President Obama read this novel, as did my grandmother's bridge club. (laughs) Some of the... Some of the most uh, uh, personally fulfilling experiences, though, has been visiting college classes that have have taken up this this novel. Um, I went to to Syracuse in September and spoke with a lecture class of 175 first years. And afterwards, several dozen of them came up to say um, how surprised they were that they had come to identify with characters whose lives were so different from their own. And of course, my, my first reaction was, that Syracuse must be a rather grim place if you are so closely identifying with, with Chechnya. Um, but, but then I remembered how difficult 
freshman year can be, that you're in this brand new place. You're trying to build the kind of life that you'll be proud of leading. You are struggling with questions of, of how to speak up when it's so much easier to, say, to stay silent. You are trying to figure out how your own individual story weaves into this magnificent tapestry of stories that is the world. And that's exactly what this novel is about. That's exactly who this novel is about. Thank you for letting me tell its story.